Welcome everybody. So this is our first module and it's called the basic genome and this is going to be a very basic module but hopefully you'll learn some like new terms and concepts throughout doing it. The first concept you're going to learn about is called thanking your funders. So computational medicine is providing money both for the filming equipment and for your lunches. So always thank your funder is very important. The next concept you're going to learn about is however the genome. Um, so you've probably all seen this cartoon before. In science, cartoons often aren't so great, but this is a fantastic one. So this is a strand of our DNA, and as you can see, there are these like two interwining ribbons. This is that like double helix structure that I'll never talk about again. And uh, these ribbons represent the two strands of DNA you have. And between them are these colored bars, and these are nucleotides. Or sorry, these are base pairs. Um, and they're made up of nucleotides, and if you do genetics research, this is like your bread and butter, it's what you're going to care about. And we write those base pairs like this. Um, so basically, these two, the top one and the bottom one are your two strands, and they kind of represent the two sides of the DNA that are twisted together. And what you can notice is that with your nucleotides, you have like a C and a G, and you have a T and an A, and C's and G's and T's and A's are always paired up together. So. If we keep looking down this strand, I've got some question marks down here. So if I have a C on one strand, pull the crowd, what's on the other strand? G. It's a G, right? And so if I have an A, then the other side is a G, right? So does knowing the second strand give me any information? Not really, right? So um, we'll keep that in mind for a second. So a couple fun facts. You have about 3 billion of these base pairs in your genome. It's a lot, and uh, we'll be discussing all of them here in a minute. And then, but you probably are all scribbling these down because you're undergraduates and that's important to you. I have to look these words up every time I need to use them. For the rest of your life in genomics, we'll refer to these as A, T, C, and G. And all you have to know is that T and A are together, and C and G go together, and you really don't even need to know that. Sometimes so, I look that up. <laughs> yeah, we always look this up. Um, if you do have to know what these terms are, whoever you're like doing research with will like let you know. Um, more importantly though, we said that there was no actual information contained in this bottom strand. And since we're really lazy in our field, that means we're just going to write DNA. When we write down someone's DNA, we're only going to use one strand of it. Because that other strand we know, right? So why write it down if we know what it is already? And it saves a lot of space in writing of types. And that's the basics of your DNA. However, as a human, or not as a human yet, apparently we're doing chromosomes first. So I said you have three billion of these base pairs. They're not all one giant continuous strain. They're actually chopped up into these 22 different chromosomes. Chromosome 22 contains a lot of them, and it's the longest one. And then as you get into like 21, 22, they're pretty short. And this is just that 3 billion base pairs of DNA chopped up into smaller bitlets. I think you mean 23 chromosomes. Sorry, 23. <laughs> also, unless you're in a very specific subfield, you're not going to care about the 23. Because those are the sex chromosomes, and they're really hard to work with. And throughout my entire PhD, I just pretended they don't exist, and I still got a PhD. So some people care about these, and if you do, that will be fantastic for you, and you do really great, important work. And for the rest of us, we pretend they don't exist because they're complicated. They do not. Um, all right, so human genetics. Um, we carry two copies of our DNA. Um, we carry one copy from, a, from each of our parents, and organisms that carry two copies of the DNA are called diploid, as opposed to organisms like bacteria, I think, only carry one copy of their DNA in their haploid. Not terribly important, but if you ever hear the word diploid, it just means two copies of your DNA. Um, so as you can see, here's my DNA right now, and I was not lazy, so I read up the whole thing. But once again, these guys here is just redundant information that we don't need, so we can kind of forget about those and normally when we write a person's DNA in this field, we're just gonna write out one of the strands for each copy of the DNA. So don't think that there are bars between these when you see it. They're not, these are two separate pieces of DNA of the same chromosome. So if you go back to here, like say this is chromosome one, 
you have two copies of chromosome one. So this would be the first copy and that would be the second copy. And if you look really carefully, you'll see that they're not identical. There are positions in our, um, in our DNA where there's variation, what genetic variation is. And for these ones that I'm showing you, these are called uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms. And you will always hear people refer to these as SNPs. You'll never actually hear anyone actually say out their full word. And more importantly, this is a SNP, not an SNP. SNP. Oh everyone God. says SNP, it's really annoying. And by everyone, I mean people who don't know better. So these are SNPs. And so if we work through this, it makes a lot of sense. So each of these is a nucleotide, right? And so this particular type of genetic variation is when you have a single nucleotide or a single position in the genome, say this position here, where the nucleotide here or there, they can take on different values. So it could be a G and a C or an A and a T or something like that. Um, and it just occurs at one position. We'll talk more about this later and it'll make it more clear. Um, another term you're gonna hear all the time is haplotype. And this is a fun accordion term that doesn't have a great meaning in who you talk to and what subdomain of biology you talk to, they'll use this term differently. But kind of as a general overview, if you look at say this this copy of your chromatin or of your chromosome, right? Say this is chromosome 13, whatever. Your haplotype is the specific arrangement of these nucleotides on it. So you can say that the haplotype in this region for this top guy is AT, where the haplotype down here is TT, if you're just focusing on like these two positions in the genome. Or you could say the haplotype here is CTT, and up here it's GAT. It's just a specific arrangement of what your genome looks like in a certain position. And I really want to be more definitive than that is, but for some people, a haplotype can be really short. It could just be like five nucleotides long. For other people, they think of haplotypes being the entire chromosome. Because in theory, you could do your entire chromosome as a haplotype. And so when you hear the term haplotype, usually what people are referring to is what one of your chromosomes looks like or what the other chromosome looks like. Um, and it can be any, any region you want. It could be a short region or a very long region. Um, however, they also will use the term chromosome for this. Um, so some people say it's like, oh, you have the A on one chromosome, but a T on the other chromosome. But someone else might say you have the A on one haplotype and the T on the other haplotype. Like these words are kind of interchangeable, definitely different meanings, but in what I just said, it actually means the exact same thing. I apologize for all of the confusion you all go through. However, one thing I want to point out is I label these haplotype 1 and haplotype 2, where this is chromosome A and chromosome B. The reason I did that is because chromosomes are all numbered. You have like chromosome 1 and 2 all the way to 22 and then your X and your Y. And so you don't want to say like, oh, this is on chromosome 1 and this is on chromosome 2 because then you're actually seeing like different regions of the genome. Whereas here they say you have an A on one chromosome and a T on the other chromosome or something like this. I'm walking through this now, so when you get confused in the future, you can like go back and be like, oh, this is what's going on. Any questions so far? Can I add like a clarification yes, about haplotypes? So one thing that helps me, because I still get confused about what a haplotype is, because everyone uses it differently, is one way to think about it is that a haplotype is a region of DNA that is usually inherited together. Um, that's one definition that gets used. And so you can think of it like chromosomes, like they're usually inherited together. This part of the chromosome is usually inherited together. So that comes into LD and stuff like that that we'll talk about later. But that might be a useful thing in case some of your professors use it that way. Mm -hmm. Definitely. 